Mike Gundy talking out of both sides of his mouth, making Harvey Dent blush. Because this is the same Mike Gundy who told us that he had found One American News Network and that it's straight up. There's no left. There's no right. There's no commentary. There's only the facts. And then your mans, Pokes fans, your mans, wore that t-shirt out to go fishing that I am fairly certain he did not buy. I am fairly certain that he was sent that t-shirt after having such glowing things to say in April about O-A-N-N. Then that photo gets taken, gets put on Facebook, it translates to Twitter, Chuba Hubbard sees it, and now we got a player's revolt, and we have a discussion. And we have so many folks that want to talk about Mike Gundy's freedom to wear a shirt. To which I offer this up. It's like a shirt wearing man walks into a shirtless bar and it's just shouting obscenities. And instead of asking the man not to shout obscenities, y'all start defending his right to wear the doggone shirt. Because it ain't about the shirt. It's about guys like Patrick Macon coming out saying... Yo, remember when he told me he was going to send me back to the ghetto as a form of motivation? No, man. That is as insulting as saying if it was a bucket of fried chicken, you would have caught it. Which is a thing that was uttered when Ahmad Rashad was wide receiver for the St. Louis Cardinals back in the day, back when they had a squad. And he was shouted down for it. And as for your thought about recruiting, and your thought about how this is going to affect him going forward. Let me tell you something. This year's Oklahoma State's recruiting class is ranked 35th in the country. Last year, Oklahoma's recruiting class was ranked 45th in the country. The year before that, 38th. The real before that, 34th. The year before that, 38th. There's a trend here. As you continue... To look at Oklahoma State and its recruiting, I would ask you to take a look at some of the kids that he is recruiting. Oklahoma State is usually the best Power 5 offer that they have that they can commit to. And many of those kiddos are absolutely outstanding football players that I sincerely wish had other options. More so now than ever. Because I watched Malcolm Rodriguez go from playing safety to linebacker and turn into a star. I watched Ogbon Lamiga, who was not that highly touted, be a star linebacker with over 100 tackles for Oklahoma State last year. Chuba Hubbard was also one of these cats that was looking at Iowa State as really the best place for him to go until Gundy said, hey, come here, and if you want to run track, run track. I don't care. Just play running back. This is also the man who is... Prize for keeping kids on the shelf until he feels they're ready to play. Remember, it's Tylen Wallace that wasn't that highly thought of coming out of the state of Texas. Matter of fact, at a time when Sam Ellinger wasn't that highly thought of as quarterback prospect, they were ranked the same. But more than that, I want you to stop talking about the shirt. I want you to forget that OANN exists in this conversation because How Mike Gundy talks to his players needs to be the issue. How his players feel about him also needs to be the issue. Stop looking to radio hosts that don't live here, that don't cover the teams, that haven't actually gone to school here and graduated, that had to leave here to go elsewhere because they are precisely performing the criminal activity that he so often attributes to men of my race. Stop listening to those people. Ask questions of your friends. Have the important conversation with your friends. Be vulnerable to conversations that make you uncomfortable. When you listen to Mike Gundy give his apology and you watch it, you see two things. You see a man who is not at all sincere You see a man who is reading from a teleprompter because he can't even give an apology without somebody writing down exactly for what he needs to say. And you see a man who is quietly and quickly going over these words in his head to say, I didn't write that. And I wonder how much he believes it. Because the time 
of giving Mike Gundy the benefit of the doubt has well and truly passed, and it's been passed for some time. The idea of giving somebody the benefit of the doubt is that they have credibility in what they are saying. When you are credible, when you are proven to be walking the walk as you talk the talk, we're more likely to listen to what you have to say and then give you the benefit of the doubt. But that's not what we need to do anymore. We need to actually have the conversation about what ideas and what this country's been built on has led us to this moment to actually try to grapple with once again. It's Ibram X. Kendi who said, and this was in The Undefeated, we have been taught that our ignorance and hate lead to racist ideas, lead to racist policies. If the fundamental problem is ignorance and hate, then your solutions are going to be focused on education and love and persuasion. But of course, his book shows that the actual foundation of racism is not ignorance and hate, but self-interest particularly economic and political and cultural. Self-interest drives racist policies that benefit that self-interest. When the policies are challenged because they produce inequalities, racist ideas spring up to justify those policies. Hate flows freely from there. Self-interest. The Portuguese had to justify their pioneering slave trade of African people before the Pope. The racist idea... Africans are barbarians. If we remove them from Africa and enslave them, they could be civilized. Quoting Kendi here, we can understand this very simply with, sa- with slavery. I'm enslaving people because I want to make money. Abolitionists are resisting me, so I'm going to convince Americans that these people should be enslaved because they're black, and then people will start believing those ideas, that these people are so barbaric that they need to be enslaved or that they are so childlike that they need to be enslaved. So many people have looked at Chuba Hubbard and tried to lord over him a scholarship, not really understanding the economics of a scholarship, which is to say if he has a talent that you don't have, he gets the scholarship. And as soon as he no longer has that talent, he loses the scholarship. An athletic scholarship is a year to year thing, people. It's not designated for five years. Kids get their scholarships pulled all the time. Kendi boils racist ideas down to an irreducible core, an idea that suggests one racial group is superior or inferior to another group in any way is a racist idea. He says, and there are two types. Segregationist ideas contend racial groups are created unequal. Assimilationist ideas, as Kendi defines them, argue that both discrimination and problematic people are to blame for inequalities. I'm quoting him here. The actual foundation of racism is not ignorance and hate, but self-interest again. All right. When we talk about these things and we talk about them with athletes, athletes ought to be allowed to be athletes, but more often than not, we are looking to them as activists because we care so much about our sports. We look to athletes to generate movements, Kendi says. When historically athletes have been good at being athletes, which is precisely what they should be good at, and we should be looking to activists to generate movements. There will then be those athletes who use their platform to support those movements and ideologies. Kendi says that while the numbers of black players on the fields, courts, and arenas have increased dramatically over the past 50 years, it's been harder to make shifts at other positions. Among them, head coach. I submit to you, who's the first black head coach in Oklahoma State football history? Had quite a few assistants, though. He's quoted here when I say, we should determine diversity in sports just like outside of sports, not by the transient players, but by the people who are permanent, like the owners, like the coaches, like the sports writers, like the sports talk show host, like the executives. If those groups are literally white, then a sport is not simply diverse. I'll end this by saying OAN reported 
earlier last night that they sold out of their t-shirts. So at least you're wearing them out in public so I can spot you from a distance.